pain, pain in training. Is pain really gain? And what type of pain is correct pain? There's a lot of talk about this, but most people do not understand. As you understand, you only need to do one set of an exercise to a point of momentary muscular failure or when you cannot get another repetition in full range of movement. Obviously, that's when you're gonna feel the most pain. You've called up more muscle fibers with each repetition until the muscle is at a point where it cannot perform well. Okay, so let's talk about this pain that we have. As the muscle works, it starts to produce friction. The lowering of the weight is where most of the actual benefit comes from. It's called progressive resistance training. It's not in the contracting of the muscle, it's in the releasing of the contraction. This is when you have friction within the fibers. The blood is trying to get into the muscle to supply oxygen and energy. And so as each repetition goes, there's gonna be a greater demand for blood, a greater amount of fibers utilized, and more friction or heat, which is gonna create more oxygen use or heavier breathing. So this pain, when you're doing a repetition properly, and that's where you contract it smoothly, and then you lower it slowly for a full four seconds on the way down, this is when you're feeling the pain. This is when you have the resistance. And then when you come up on the next repetition and the blood's been allowed to get in there, you're trying to contract against all that blood and that volume that's increasing in the muscle, and this causes more pain. So pain is gain. The deeper you push a muscle into muscular failure, the more benefit you're gonna have. The more fibers that are used while the muscle is working, the more it's gonna to try to assist other assisting muscles around it. So when you use compound movements like an overhead press or a pull down or a chin or a dip or a squat or a leg press, you're gonna involve more muscles and they're gonna be used in the right proportion. But you're gonna involve more fibers, you're gonna involve more time and you're gonna involve more need for volume of blood so the pain is going to increase. Now, here's the beauty of this. You cannot produce more power on your last reps. You're actually pre-exhausting with each rep reaching that point of momentary failure. So the pain cannot cause an injury when it's done in this manner. Now, if you're gonna use kinetic energy where you're whipping the ropes up and down, or you're trying to overhead press a barbell with one ballistic movement, or you're trying to swing a kettlebell, these types of kinetic energy and ballistic energy, those are gonna create injuries. This is why there are so many injuries with different types of cross training and different types of uh, specificity training. So pain is gain when it's done slowly, the reps are done slowly, resisting it on the way down. The farther you push into it, the greater need for blood, the greater need for oxygen, the greater need for energy. So pain is gain when it's slow, resistance training and the muscles is being pushed. If you have sharp pain, ballistic type pain, this is the wrong type of pain. So it's very simple, more fibers involved, more repetition, equals more muscle involvement, which means more pain. But the less chance of injury, because the farther you go into the exercise, the less power you can produce on the positive side of the repetition, so the less chance you have for injury. So pain is gain, and the briefer and the more intense your workout, the better the overall result. So that's pain is gain and how it works.